Hi, and welcome to the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. So welcome to part three of trying to fix Mike McGinnis's Rev Zero Apple II. And this time we finally have an answer. So if you recall from episode number 69, we had used the Arduino card attached to slot 7 to take a look at the ROM code as the Apple II was booting. And what we saw is that the code was stuck in an infinite loop where it kept thinking that there was a key on the keyboard, but then it was never able to clear the keyboard strobe. Looking at the schematic, the clear strobe line comes out of chip 74LS138 at location F13. So what I'm going to do is use a logic probe and I'm just going to see what's going on with that chip as the computer is in this stuck state. If we take a look at the clear strobe line, which is pin number 14 on that chip, you can hear that it's just high and it's never going low. So in other words, it's never actually getting addressed by the 6502. So then I took a look at the address lines that are coming into this chip. And they're address lines four, five, six, and seven, and they come in on pins one through four. So if we look at pin one, that sounds good. We it sounds like addresses. Pin three, pin four, but now let's go to pin two. And all we hear is noise. So something strange is going on with address line number five. So this is our first real breakthrough. And if we actually go over here to, say, the F8 ROM, that address line 5 comes out of the 6502, goes through a circuit up here, and then goes into the ROMs, and it's actually pin number 3 on the ROMs. So if we just put the logic probe on pin 3, everything sounds fine. Let's go over to ROM F0, pin number 3. Still sounds good. ROM E8. Pin number three, E0, fine, D8, sounds good, and then D0, and we're getting nothing. We can actually confirm this just using a simple continuity test from a multimeter. So I've unplugged the Apple II, and I've also disconnected the power supply and now if we just do a continuity test here on the third pin of the ROM so this again this is address line A5 then we can see that between F8 and F0 they're connected still connected still connected and then when we get to ROM D0 we get nothing so if you look really closely there at ROM D0 on address line A5, which connects to pin three, you can see that there's a break in the trace right underneath there. So it looks like somehow it suffered some damage. Maybe somebody dropped a screwdriver on it or something. And so to prove that that's the problem, we're just gonna go ahead and attach a jumper wire between ROMs D8 and D0 on pin three. Here's the moment of truth. We've got the jumper wire going from ROM D8, pin number three, to ROM D0, pin number three. So this bypasses the broken trace on the board. And we'll go ahead and turn it on and hit reset. Ah, look at that. And we're dumped into the monitor. And we can type, for example, F800 list. And there is the assembly code. So everything Looks like it's now working great. I've gone ahead and scraped off the top layer of the PCB to expose the traces on either end of the brake, and now I'm just gonna solder in a little pillow on top of it. After many weeks of trying to diagnose the problem with Mike McGinnis's Rev Zero Apple II, we finally managed to trace the problem down to a broken trace underneath the D0 ROM. I was able to fix this using a simple solder bridge across the broken trace, and now everything is back to normal. So I'm happy to report that this Rev Zero Apple II has a new lease on life, and hopefully it'll keep working for many years to come. So thanks for watching.